It's not some science fantasy effect from 2001. This electronic display emanating from Australia's largest computer is a picture of the condition past, present and future of planet Earth. The program was originally devised by a scientist working from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Jay Forrester. It was developed under the auspices of the Club of Rome by an MIT research team to present a complex model of the world and what we humans are doing to it. The program, called World One, doesn't pretend to be a precise forecast. What it does for the first time in man's history on the planet is to look at the world as one system. It shows that Earth cannot sustain present population and industrial growth for much more than a few decades. It shows that simply cleaning up our car exhausts and making some small effort to limit our families simply isn't enough. It's like an electronic guided tour of our global behaviour since 1900 and where that behaviour will lead us. Well, this is the printed version of what we've just seen on the television screen. And what looks at first to be just a maze of computer characteristics is really a system of very simple graphs which project what's going to happen to the planet over the next 150 years if we don't do something drastic to stop it. Down the left-hand side of the graph is the date, 1900, 1940, 1980, 2020, right down to 2060. Now, each of these lines of, of, of letters represents a curve showing some aspect of the condition of the planet. The further out this way they go, the greater that figure is, the further this way, uh, the less. For example, P represents population. So here it is at 1900 and then it comes up to 1940, it starts to take off. Here we are at 1980, up to the turn of the century, and then it starts to peter off. Let's now have a look at this next curve, the Q curve, which is the quality of life. And this is represented by, for example, the amount of space people have, the uh, amount of money they have to spend, the amount of food they have to eat. Now, it increases rapidly up to 1940, but from 1940 on, the quality of life diminishes. And here we are about the turn of the century and we come up to the year 2020 and it's really come right back. More people of course means that you start to chew up your supply of natural resources and this is this curve here, the end curve. And it shows that slowly but steadily the pool of natural wealth in the world, natural resources, minerals, oil and so on, is slowly but steadily diminishing. So this is the situation. As population increases the quality of life decreases and the supply of natural resources decreases. But have a look at this curve here. This is called the Z curve and it represents pop uh, pollution. Now, predictably enough, as the population increases up to 1980, pollution increases. There's more rubbish. But from 1980 to the year 2020, pollution really takes off. This is assuming, of course, that we don't do anything about it. So the year 2020, the condition of the planet be starts to become highly critical. And if we don't do anything about it, this is what's going to happen. The quality of life is going to go right back to practically zero. Pollution is going to become so serious, right out here, that it will start to kill people. So the population will diminish. Right back here, less than it was in the year 1900. And at this stage, round about the year 2040, 2050, civilized life as we know it on this planet will cease to exist. Well, hopefully, of course, it, it won't be allowed to happen, but it's taken this kind of shock treatment to nudge governments into doing something, and slowly we are. We're starting to clean up our atmosphere. We're starting to recycle our rubbish. We're doing something positive about population control. But so far, our efforts have really been just a drop in the ocean.